Hello, my name is Benjamin Hart. I'm an American attorney and the managing director of Integrity Legal here in Bangkok, Thailand. As the title of this video suggests, we're discussing this new so-called destination Thailand visa. And with regard to this, understand we are in early days here. You're seeing a lot of folks on the internet yet again talking about things that quite honestly, I often wonder if they have a very deep understanding of. Now, there are some other folks that I think have a very deep and nuanced understanding of Thai immigration and how it works, as we'll get into the source material here in a moment. That source, in my opinion, is, is quite good. But then you'll see other things on the internet, it, like with tax, that if you bring any bot in there, they're going to tax you 34%. There's nonsensical stuff out there as well. What you need to take away from this video right now regarding this DTV visa, we don't know how this works yet. We're right on the cusp here in June at the time of making this video. We have not seen this thing rolled out. We have not seen the practical implications when it comes to the regulations that immigration is going to impose with regard to this. We don't know what the adjudication is going to look like coming from Thai immigration regarding these, th these type of visas, as well as the adjudication protocols associated with the Thai Ministry of Foreign Affairs, i.e. Thai consulates and embassies abroad who might be issuing these types of visas. In any case, let's get into this. I thought of making this video after reading a recent article from the Patea Mail, that's pateamail.com. Article is titled, Thailand's New Visa Rules from June 1, Break Fresh Ground. Quoting directly, in other moves, the number of non-immigrant visas will be reduced by creating a new DTV, Destination Thailand Visa, which will now cover remote workers, sportsmen, musicians, and medical tourists, among others. Okay, first off, again, I'm going to be interested to see the way this plays out because, again, as we've discussed in other contexts, work authorization is not the same thing as immigration authorization. I've read the Immigration Act of 79. There is no inherent work authorization conferred under that either. So when they talk about, oh, these visas are going to allow things like sportsmen and remote workers and musicians, we've heard this before, and it's I don't want to say it's disingenuous, but I worry that it's kind of a misnomer because as a practical matter, I'm not sure that that's how this is going to play. Again, it's like the context of a business visa. People think because they have a business visa, they can work in Thailand. Well, they can't, or at least historically, that's always been the case. The business visa is your visa. Work authorization, your work permit, is another thing entirely. And as we've discussed before, Labor Department is a different ministry is a, is a, it's a different department of the Thai government, if you will, than the immigration department. They're two different things. So that's something to bear in mind when reviewing policies regarding immigration and when, especially in the foreign community here, when they say, well, I, I can work on this visa. Well, have you checked that out? That's a really good question. And it, it's going to, again, it's going to depend on your circumstances. And again, even government folks come out and say things that are not in line with what the actual laws are. Again, we haven't seen an actual amendment to the Immigration Act of 79. So anything that comes along would be regulatory. And, and the regulations are subordinate at the end of the day to the act itself. You got to bear that in mind. In any event, quoting further, the DTV will allow a stay up to 180 days plus an extension on payment of a further fee for a period of five years. Now, again, we discussed this in another video. Apparently, this is going to be similar to the old multi-entry one-year visas, wherein the sticker validity, if you will, was a year. But when you came into Thailand, you got 90 days of status at each entry. From what I've read in other sources, this will have a five-year sticker validity, if you will, with the ability to come in and be granted lawful status for 180 days, and you can get a second 180 days, but also from what I've read, that will end your status. You, you can't continue to do that throughout the whole five years. Total amount of time you actually get in country and how you choose to use that is up to you, but the total amount, as I understand, is a year over the course of that five years. That's how I'm understanding it as of the time of this video, again, Understand, we haven't seen this rolled out. We haven't seen the practicalities associated with that, with this type of visa. It's why I've kind of drugged my feet on talking about it, because I don't like to speculate about these things. I prefer to talk about them as they're rolling out, and then go ahead and talk about them as we're seeing them practically 
applied, as we're seeing the rules practically applied. But for now, what my understanding is, is that you get two 180-day sets of status or intervals of lawful status, if you will, over the course of a five-year period. Quoting further, the government spokesman did not provide all the details, but there is a provision for families to join the visa holder. The cost of the visa appears to be 10,000 baht per 180 days with a 500,000 baht bond lodged in a Thai bank. I've, al I've also heard various things proving up an ability, that proving up that you have 500,000 baht. Again, uh, this notion of lodging it as a bond, that seems on point to me. And it's interesting because I think those who are trying to promulgate these new rules may be keeping an eye on various tax implications because, for example, the, well, it, maybe they're trying to keep it lower than a huge amount of money because they don't want to put any onus on people trying to transfer money in and then having to possibly deal with accessibility or liability. Uh, bear in mind, the FBAR refor reporting requirements out of the United States are $10,000 in, 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 in an offshore bank account. So the 500,000 baht, currently that's about 15,000 US. That in and of itself would trigger the need to go ahead and file an FBAR. So again, there's a lot going on with these new types of visas. It could have certain tax implications. Again, we don't know exactly how this is going to look. In other things that I've read, they've talked about this and said it's not necessarily a bond. It's more a like proving up that you have credit type of thing. But long story short, it does seem that there's a financial component to this new so-called DTV visa.